Let's see everybody. Welcome in. Hey, martial artistry. What's happening Friday night freestyle in the building? It's going to be a fun one tonight, you guys. It's going to be fun. So we have our 20 by 24 inch little canvas up here, right? Everybody's going to tell me where they're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? We've got new merch, by the way. Brand new hats, right? And a brand new shirt. It's got a reflection of mountains at a UFO. And uh, I love it. So if you want to get these items, go over to my Etsy store and uh, check them out. We're going to be using some of the Meaden paints today. So we'll go through the colors that we have. I think that's their bright yellow, uh, the mid yellow, red, uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, sap green, mid green, the ultramarine blue, their crimson, and the black. And then we've got our Bob Ross colors that we're going to be going through. <laughs> and of course, it's every single one, which is our cad yellow, bright red, yellow ochre, dark sienna, van dyke brown, sap green, thalo green, prussian blue, thalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, just every single color on every single platform. It's going to be fantastic. All right, let's go. Let's do this. So we've taken our, our black canvas, right? Initially, we covered it in Bob Ross. No, sorry. Initially, we covered it in our uh, black Liquitex gesso, right? It's an acrylic black gesso that dries within 10 minutes, and this whole black section is dry. And then you're going to take your liquid clear, which looks like this, right? Just like that. Bob Ross liquid clear. You're going to cover the black section in the liquid clear only. And then up in our white section, we're going to take the opposite of the liquid clear, which is the liquid white, and that's going to go into our white section. So everything is wet. I get the question all the time. Do you let the thing dry in between sessions? No, never let it dry. You got to let it be wet. So look at that little bit of white onto our canvas. And obviously the, <laughs> the clear is clear. You're not going to be able to see it. Now, I was thinking as a, like a sunset for this painting. So you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from and what's your favorite sandwich, guys, because I love to know. Now, there's two ways to do a sunset. You do a blue sky with like red and pink, or you do like yellow, orange, all the colors. And since we have all the colors out on the palette, we might as well do them all. So let's go into our, our Bob Ross uh, Cad Yellow, and it's mixed in with a little bit of the red down here accidentally. I didn't want it to do that, but happy little accidents, that's how it goes. So our Bob Ross Yellow with the Bob Ross Red, on there just a touch. Ooh, it made this gorgeous little orangey, like goldish color. Look at that. Drop it right in, right? I also get the question, wouldn't it be easier if you did the background first and then the foreground next, right? Like we normally do if we have just a white canvas. And my answer to that is always, we put the black gesso on in order to keep everything nice and dark, right? You want to have those dark shadows way down here away from our sun. It's got to be really dark. So we use that black gesso first and it gives you these really cool little technique and these uh, effects where you can kind of drag color over into your black and look like rays of light shooting down. It's really neat. So a little bit more of our red onto the brush. You see we drag through the yellow ochre as well. Maybe we'll put some of the red up here. Don't want to cover up too much of our little black mountain section. You don't have to cover everything. Right now, let's go into the crimson from the Magic Fly set because I love their color of their crimson. It's like a super purpley like fuchsia looking crimson, right? Let's take this guy. Oh, look at that color, you guys. Uh, it's just so excellent too. And you gotta have that liquid white on the canvas. You have to have it there. Let's see what their ultramarine blue looks like on a, on a uh, white canvas. I've never used this on a white canvas before. So ultramarine blue. Ooh, it's kind of like a gray. Well, I mean, it's mixing with all the colors and stuff anyway, but it's a, it's a cool looking color. It's a neat looking little color. Now, the best part about the, the mead and paints that are Right down here, the box might be out of view for this the YouTube and Facebook folks, but it's right down here. This is what the kit looks like, right? Dang, just like that. That's what the kit looks like. It's only $84 for this whole kit. It comes with an easel, paints, brushes, cleaning kit, all the stuff you need to use in order to paint with Josh it comes inside this box, besides the Bob Ross liquid white and the, the turpentine and stuff, which we need to use to clean the brushes, but I bring it up because the Meaden paints, their black is actually black, which is really going to help us out. Now, what I want to do is grab a little of our Prussian blue, just straight onto the same brush, right? Or Thalo blue, excuse me, the lighter color of the blues and drop that guy down up in here. And I'm going to leave this little section white right back in there just to have, I don't know, to have our colors be able to move around. It doesn't need to be so big. And maybe perhaps we take a bit of that crimsony color, 
I just dumped that right in there. Look at that, that, oh, it's just so deep. Just a deep purple when you mix the blue, the Bob Ross blue with the mead and crimson just makes this gorgeous purpley color. I'm gonna do the whole bit of our blue sky in that purple. That's fantastic. Man, gotta love that. And you know what? You know when I talk about the black because we're gonna use a bit, just a bit. Don't need a whole lot, all right? That's actually probably way too much. So we're gonna wipe some of it off. But just a bit up in the top, because this black, man, I'm telling you, it's actually black. And so as it mixes in versus the Bob Ross black, which is more of a kind of a really dark purpley color. So when that stuff mixes, it's actually black and you don't need a whole lot of it. Now, if you're watching over on TikTok, you can find the link to this meeting set right here in the bio of uh, in my bio on TikTok. You can go find it. It's like the, the only link that's available for you to click on. And that'll take you to this set right here, right? Now, if you're watching on Facebook, I have other uh, photos and links where you can actually click on and other videos that have the link in it where you can click on and get your set. And if you're watching on YouTube, it should be in the description. If it's not, it will be in the description of another video. So I'm going to have to, uh, just thinking about it now, I'm going to have to add that link to my copy and paste for all the shows that I forgot to do. <laughs> so it's probably not in your description, but in any case, it is out there somewhere. Right? It's out there somewhere. Now, I really only want to keep a little bit. Maybe we have our sun like pop right out through there, have everything else blend away. It's going to be really cool. So, washed our brush, dried it off nice and clean. You guys tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And make sure you get your brand new Paint With Josh hats, okay? Black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> I don't even like the Steelers, okay? Don't hate me for not liking the Steelers. But it's really cool. It's got the the banner logo, it's really extended versus our old hat style, which just had the uh, thing. And this one's got the unlimited colors, so it literally has every color in the rainbow inside that logo. Fantastic, guys. So I'm going to make this one available in the store. I was trying it out. I didn't know if I was going to like the style or like the colors or whatever, but I really do. And I'm going to make it available for everybody to go get it. So uh, now we're going to come into our brush, into our lightest area. We're just going to start to crisscross back and forth. And because all that liquid white is on the canvas, and we crisscross, and we crisscross back and forth, and we get our dancing in our aerobics, right? We're like this. Ah, get our aerobics in. Just crisscrossing back and forth into our lightest spot. Because we don't want to have all those dark colors go and color, uh, cover over all of our brightness just yet, right? Not just yet. Just let it blend out, get nice and soft. And watch what I was talking about with those rays of sun. You just have some rays of light shoot down in behind your rocks back here. Just make it the coolest little thing you ever done did see, right? Now, that's why we do the black first in this instance. Now we're going to come out into our darker colors, which are these first. That's the darkest out here, right? Besides our black. But just like that, crisscross back and forth, blend it in over here, bring it down. Look at how dark it got just by bringing down that little bit of our couple little swip swipes, right? Our little swipers. Swiper no swipey. We're going to come up in here. I, I, I had kids, okay? I watched Dora. I had my fair share of Dora. We're just going to crisscross. Now with this black, watch this. Watch how far it wants to grow. And because it's actually black, it's going to make the sky super dark up here. Oh, fantastic. Just off of our pressure, we decide how much of that darkness we're going to allow to come over, right? We get to choose. We're like, hey, you're going to stop right there, and we're going to crisscross, and back and forth, and back and forth. And the more that we mix, the darker it's going to become, right? So we're going to go lighter pressure, lighter pressure, lighter pressure, lighter even talk softer as we do it, right? Now, eventually we're gonna have to wash this brush off because it's gonna get so nasty that you're not gonna be able to do anything with it. But let's get this last little bit of our darkness up here. And just based off of our pressure, right? If I'm just lightly pulling it, just very lightly dragging, it's not gonna grow very far. If I really push on it, then it's gonna come down much further, right? It's also gonna blend out much softer as well. So. All depends on what you want yours to look like. I don't know how many times I say that during a show, but it's a lot. There we go. Look at all those differences. And they're just fading away. Really gradient swipe here where you can't really tell where the color stops, where it starts. All those little deep areas and our one little spot of brightness. Maybe our sun is like right back on the other side of the mountain back there. Really cool. If you ask me guys. so. I'm going to take a quick little drink. You guys are going to tell me where we're watching from, and we're going to get some shout-outs over here. Ooh, that sky looks nice. Mmm. Mmm. Thank you, Chef Zeph. Appreciate you. I am Josh Ross. I appreciate it. But 
People, people call me the next Bob Ross. I'm not so pretentious as to say it myself, but that's what people call me. So now everybody over on YouTube, make sure you give me a thumbs up over there, right? The more thumbs ups we have, the more people are going to watch the show. Same goes for the TikTok audience. The more taps on the screen, the more comments. Same for Facebook, more taps on the screen. The more comments we have, the more people are going to see the video and come in and check out what we're doing and see this gorgeous looking sky in here. Man, we, did, we outdid ourselves on this sky. I'm telling you, it's the mix of the Meaden paints and the Bob Ross paints. Those Meaden colors, man, especially with their black. I don't think I'll ever use, I mean, I do use Bob Ross black in the sky, but I don't think I ever will again because I really prefer that Meaden black and how it blends. I wash your brush off, dab it on a paper towel, come back out into here, hit it, and then dab it on a paper towel so we don't get any of our darker color, come back into that bright area, shoot it off, dab it on a paper towel again. Come back in here, bah, shoot it out of there, right? Craziness. Dab it off on a paper towel so you don't have to go and make it dark, right? Then we, maybe we come that way, pull it down. Pushing our brush in, shooting out the light, right? Just like that, very cool. Coming out now. Whole time, all we did was just go like this onto a, a paper towel, really, just to get the color off of the brush. Now I'm going to come up into our darkest area where it meets our lighter area and begin to blend again because we got a few little lines that I don't like up here. And so as we pull it down and get all crazy, remember our sky is going to want to grow all nuts and we get to put any little bit of clouds over whatever we don't like. So don't stress about it too much. Always got to cover the edges of the canvas, cover the top while you got that color on there. Got to get it covered up. And then it's going to be easier. Perfect. Okay. Now, just like that, guys, let's go throw in some clouds. You guys tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Make sure you tag the place, too. If it's Subway, tag Subway. If it's Jimmy John's, tag Jimmy John's. Put, put the little, how do you don't know how to tag? Put the at symbol and then type in Jimmy John's or Subway, and it'll pull up a long list. You click the one you want and then press post. That's how you tag somebody. There we go. Oh, look at those clouds, you guys. You guys. All right, let's take a little bit of our white paint. We'll get the Bob Ross white because it's a little bit thicker than the Mead and White. The Mead and White is perfect for like highlighting winter scenes and stuff. But up here where we want our thick clouds, I want to use the thickest paint I can get, and that's Bob Ross, Windsor & Newton, Gamblin 1980, those color paints. Now watch, maybe we come up here and we're just literally going to take our brush and just make a nasty mess and just go like this. <laughs> Just straight up from the light color, kind of cutting off where it attaches itself, right? Right where those colors meet, we're going to cut it off. Now we're going to take our one inch Bob Ross landscape brush. I use it for blending. It's a, it's a hog hair bristle brush that's got long bristles so you can make little teeny actions very softly, right? And what we're going to do is very lightly just start to mix the paint and go back and forth, little circles. That's all we got to do. Right, little bits, try not to drag too much of our dark color back towards the thing this way. And look at that little cloud just popping out right there. Just so soft. He's just out there floating around, loving it, loving the whole thing, right? Now, why don't we come back, why don't we make him a little crazier? We'll add a little bit more detail up into here. Just some nuts craziness, right? Just weird. You have to make it weird. It's not a specific shape. There is no specific shape for a cloud. A cloud can look however the heck you want it to look. However you saw that one yesterday or last week that you were like looking at and you are like, ooh, that looks really cool. I'm gonna try to repaint that, right? It doesn't have to look anything like your cartoon quote unquote clouds. You can make a mess and have a good time. And I like to show you that's all we really do anytime we come up here and paint. Just make a mess and have fun. And that's what Painting with Josh is all about, man. It even says it on my brand new hat. Paint with Josh, make a mess. It says it right down there right down there guys now i don't want to go too crazy on our clouds off to the left because we're going to have this big old mountain but let's say back in here right remember you got to use a fair amount of our white paint in order to get it to stay white right it's all about the three p's of paint with josh that we talk about all the time we're constantly talking about the three p's and if you're a brand new follower someone's going to have to let you know what those three p's are in the comments so Let's see who knows the three P's of Paint with Josh, the most important words that begin with P in the language lexicon. The most important words, right, that you can possibly find. The three P's of Paint with Josh. 
So if you don't know the three P's, take a guess. Take a guess at what you think the three P's are and write it in the comments. Who knows, you might guess right. Some people get really, 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 really close. They get two out of the three. And that's really close if you ask me, if you've never heard of the three P's before. Now, we're going to come in with the Bob Ross knife, which I put, <laughs> put it behind me. Bam, Bob Ross knife, just like that, the big one. And I like using the bigger one. Now, we're gonna mix up some colors here in order to make a shadowy dark color. And I'm gonna use some of our black as well for this mountain from the Meaden paint. So which colors are we mixing up in order to make a shadowy mix of color into this dark pile of paint? Which colors are we gonna mix? Guys, you gotta let me know. You let me know, because I forget. I'm, I'm colorblind, I forget what these colors are. <laughs> could you imagine if I was colorblind and I painted like this? Wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, you could do it. You could literally do it. I tell you, put the, you know, you read the label, yellow here, red there, yellow there, red, brown, green, blah, blah, and I tell you, and then if you just watch where I pull paint from, pull from your same color, and even if you're colorblind, you could paint this. I swear on my life, I swear on my life. So, what was I saying? Oh, I was asking about the three colors. What three colors do we mix up in order to make a crazy dark shadow? Does anybody know? Maybe we can get some pinned comments over here on TikTok. Black, blue, and crimson. We're gonna pin Jay right there. Everybody go follow Jay if you're watching on TikTok because everyone knows if you're ever in that pin spot and you want all the follows, no one's gonna be there if you didn't go follow them, right? So, follow it forward. Okay, we're gonna take our dark paint. We're gonna come through. We're gonna scrape it up. Actually, I said I was gonna get a bit just a touch, a little scrape of that black. And I'm talking about the littlest bit because it is wetter. See the difference in between those piles? See if I can get them close enough to the cameras. See the difference in between there? This one's much wetter than this one is. This is like dry, like it's been sitting out for a couple days. This is fresh out the tube, you see what I mean? So we're gonna mix that in and all it's gonna do is make it a bit darker. We're not gonna have too much of it. I don't want it to be too sloppy wet. We still want it to have that dark or our very thick texture. We just want it to be dark, so we add a little touch of the meat and black in there. Now we're gonna come in here like this, and let's just decide, who knows, off in the distance we get this crazy mountain up here. Doesn't even have to look like any mountain you've ever seen. You can make it up, you can do whatever you wanna do, right? But in this instance, since we're using that meat and black, scrape it, scrape your mountain. Do not leave all that paint up there to just chill, right? Because that wet paint is really gonna wanna grow versus our dry paint. So we're scraping up, see my angle of my knife? It's not like this, we're not laying the paint down. We're scraping it off. See that big old white mark we just left in the canvas? Scraping at it, getting it all to come away and that way there won't be too much. That's the first P of Paint With Josh. The first P, right? If you haven't heard it by now in the comments, the amount of paint that we put on the canvas. That's the very first P. Now, the second P comes right away after the paint. The amount of what? What are we using? How much, what's that word that starts with P that determines how hard we're pushing? What is that word, right? We're pushing on the canvas, obviously. Really pushing on it, but are we pushing it hard? Are we pushing it light? What's that word that defines what we're using? The amount of, I know you guys know it, come on. <laughs> I'm not even looking at the camera and I'm like, come on. I know you know it. Now I gotta come back and look, let's see. The amount of pressure. What's that, Q-bone, let's pin Q-bone. Everybody go follow Q-bone on TikTok. Save that for your, uh, for your voicemail. Paint with Josh says, follow Q-bone on TikTok. All right. <laughs> okay, depends on how far we pull it out, right? We don't wanna come up here. This is our foreground up here. We don't wanna go too crazy. So don't pull it out too far. But just like that, we have this gorgeous little mountain way off in the distance back there, right? Now we're going to come up with a little bit of shadowy mix, right? Doesn't matter if it's summer down here in the forest, way up on top of that mountain can still be nice and snowy and cold. So we're going to grab up a little bit of our Bob Ross white. Uh, yeah, Bob Ross white, the teensiest bit of the crim, uh, the, my goodness, I'm all over the place. The Bob Ross white and the smallest bit of the phthalo blue. I'm pointing at it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, Crimson, <laughs> no, it's not, it's phthalo blue. Phthalo blue, the lighter color blue, right? Like it makes a sky blue color, gorgeous. Gorgeous sky blue color, look at that. Now, it's almost too sky blue for me. So what I like to do is take a touch, little teeniest bit of our, our, our original mountain color, and we mix that guy in, and watch what it does. All right, it just makes it a sort of a little a touch grayer, just a little blue, little bluish grayish action, right? 
Now we're gonna get double the amount of paint that we just grabbed. We're gonna get the teeniest bit of the blue from down there and then we're gonna mix this guy up. Mix that guy up over here. Now, it's gonna look to us, right? When we're up close looking at it on our palette, it's gonna look like it's got a little blue tint to it, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. You don't want it to be pure white, right? Pure white versus this little bit of blue because it's very far away. I like, it's hard to explain in words what I, what I do. So just watch and follow. <laughs> now we're gonna come in here, we're gonna scrape up a little bit of our, our kind of grayish blue, kind of the color that if, the, if that was the color of the sky outside, you'd wanna go back in and make a bowl of soup just cause it's a dark stormy gray color. All right now look at that. Look at that little bit of pressure, right? We're not trying to scrape it away. Our knife is very much on the angle of the canvas, almost smacking into it with our handle, right? And that way you can very lightly drop little things, even when you just got the teeniest, tiniest bit of paint on the knife, right? It doesn't have to be super thick all the time. It really doesn't. Come back in here with another small little bit of blue on the back half of that little peak. Maybe there's a little valley that lives in there. Just a little small guy. And you don't have to use the big knife if you don't want to, right? Doesn't all have to be the same. Ooh, maybe that guy's like a glacial cliff. And then over here, we got this little ridge. I can just see it in my brain. I can see it, right? That whole thing. It's gonna be covered in white. Fantastic. Well, our little sky blue color, not white. Now down here, remember we scraped up a white, we mixed it with a teeniest bit of blue. And that way it's gonna look like some fantastic, gorgeous white snow hanging off the top of our little mountain down there. Oh, look at it. It's just so fresh. Just so fresh and pretty. Just love it. Fresh means precious, by the way. Could mean pressure. <laughs> Paint fresh practice. That's what it is. All right, we're gonna mix in this white with this blue, pulling from the blue section back towards the white section. So it blends it in, right? Get that very cool little effect. And then take a teeny tiny bit of our original darkish color. Throw that guy back in here. Very cool, a couple little bits, all you need. A couple little dark areas, really. It's all you really need. You don't need to make it look perfect. Now, get a bit more paint. We're gonna come on to this side, and now we're gonna make our little glacial ridge just floating up there on top of all, and casting all that blue shadow, just like that, with the smallest amount of pressure, and do it fast. Whip it down there, don't, don't try to go like this, and just try to go as slow as you possibly can. You cannot control the amount of pressure when you're trying to do it slow. If you go like this and you whip it off the canvas, it will break just like that, I promise you. I promise you on everything. Why don't we come over here, right? Pulling it, just sliding it out, and then we're gonna take from this guy and we're just gonna start to pull down very lightly, all right? Getting it to break, getting it to stretch, getting it to get out of there. Keeping that blue section in there though, because you gotta have a bit of shadowy area. Maybe we had our snow pick up right down underneath there. Woo! Man, that's pretty. Uh, you know what? Take this one out the store. It's no longer for sale. Uh, you guys cannot have it. By the way, this one's for sale. <laughs> uh, it, no, seriously, it is for sale. Uh, you can purchase it right now if you wanted to get it before it's even done. Lock it down as your painting because I swear they go fast. They go fast. Friday night's not the best night for selling paintings, I figured out, but you never know. This one could sell at any moment during the show and you're going to be like, dang, I should have got it back when Josh said get it. He was telling me to get it and I didn't listen. Look at that little ridge right there, you guys. Ooh, that's so fire. So fire-tastic. Now, if there's gonna be a little light projection over there, you gotta have a little bluey, shadowy projection underneath him. So, get up in there, start dragging it down. All right, very light. And then sometimes you gotta go back and add a little bit more on top just to get that breaking action in there. Very cool. Very cool, smallest, teensiest little bit of our darker color in different spots. Doesn't have to be exactly the same throughout the whole thing. Now you got a little bit of shadow, and then we can take our little bit of white, change our direction the smallest bit. Bang, look at that, you guys. How cool is that? Just so simple, so easily done. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm 100% serious. I never went to art school. I've never taken a class. I'm about to teach a class tomorrow. And I've never even taken one before in my life. Can you believe it? You do not need a class. You do not, I mean, unless you want to come hang out with me for an hour. It's not really a class. We just like to have fun, right? You don't need a big fancy instructor or a certified this or that or whatever, right? You can literally do it because I am. I'm living proof. Living proof. 
that you can literally take a, an opportunity like COVID, right? What was everybody doing during COVID, right? Wasting your time watching Netflix and stuff. You wanna know what I was doing? Learning how to paint, teaching people how to paint, right? And then when COVID was over, guess who had a new career? Old paint with Josh. I never went to school. You couldn't go to school during COVID. You couldn't, you couldn't go to a, a, a person, an in-person class during COVID, right? What was I supposed to do? Well, taught myself how to paint. Now I'm teaching you, proving that you don't need art school. You don't need to take a class from an instructor and get, uh, you know, get charged hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars for them to teach you a crappy way to paint, right? I can outpaint any instructor that you know. I'm gonna put it out there right now. I will challenge any instructor, any instructor that wants to come on my show and think you can paint better than me, I challenge you, right? If anyone certified, anyone uncertified, I challenge thee, come on the Paint With Josh show and prove me wrong. Cause you do not need it guys, I'm telling you. Just like that, mix up a little bit of misty action right at the bottom. Now, <clears throat> here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take our brush. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna make our dark color a bit lighter. Actually, you know what? Because we didn't use the, the mead and black in the entire set of, of uh, our Bob Ross black, we don't need to mix it too much. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna come in with the white first, a little bit of white on the brush, and now a little bit of our darkness. Then we're gonna judge based on what the color is as we're pulling it down. I'm gonna go, okay, just about there. A little stormy sky color, right? Something that's gonna stand out from beyond that. Now we're gonna come in, we're gonna start making little hash marks up into the mist. Sometimes we go up into the snow, sometimes we come down, sometimes we leave a little bit of area, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we come up and touch it. Sometimes we don't, we do that. Sometimes we do whatever we wanna do. And if it's not as dark and it's not standing out as much as you want, you darken it up a bit, you come back in, right? Pop them in, all we're doing. And a little bit of touchy little bits of trees way out at the base of that little mountain, off there, right? There we go, popping them in. Making them darker and darker and darker until we decide, okay, that looks cool. Now, that mist, that the same color that we left underneath here as we're making up all of our little bit of foggy action, that's what you gotta leave back in there, right? And it's not a straight line across. I always, Bob always said, if you, if you do it straight across, then it's gonna look like somebody came in with a, a razor blade and chopped it off, right? So what I like to do is kind of do it like a heart monitor. You come down, you come up a little bit, you come down, you come up a little bit, and you come down. It's like, boop, boop. <laughs> right? Just like that. Whatever you want to make yours look like, don't add too much paint. And then we're going to pop these little guys in. Now, down in here, we want to make it a little darker around the base than we do at the, uh, you know, throughout the entire top. The whole top doesn't have to be as dark down here. You need a little bit of extra paint there so we can make some more mist, right? We're going to take the same brush. We're going to come in and we're going to tap. And we're going to tap it down. And we're going to tap it down. And we're going to tap it down. Bringing all that mist down into there, right? All that little difference in color way down here. And all we're doing is just tapping it. Just tapping at the base, creating all that bit of foggy look, right? All we're doing. Take our brush, let's go up to the top. Try not to hit the mountain, right? Because it's gonna wanna grow. Our trees are gonna grow a little bit. And look at that little bit of orange color that we left back in there that separates our trees from our mountain. Just fantastic, you guys. Just awesome. Now we're gonna come over here, mix that guy up. And then we can get to decide where our bit of rock comes back out, right? Because he really comes out to about right there into the trees. And then we can decide what his shape looks like. It's a lot higher, a uh, lot more up here that comes out behind the clouds and we get to bring it forth, whatever we want to do. Or you can have it look like all that mist is like rolling down through this valley. Whatever you want to do is what you're going to do. And that's what I always say. Now let's take up that bit of our, that little pile where we used our white color in order to brighten it up a bit. Let's get that out of there. And let's make up a bit more of our Bob Ross black, our Bob Ross crimson, and our Bob Ross blue. We're gonna get some of the Prussia blue in there this time. Get that darker blue color in there. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna stand out as being in front, right? Anytime you make something darker and you put it up against something lighter, it's gonna make it stand out like it's a bit closer. Now let's get rid of all this snowy paint that we were using for our big mountain back there so we don't get it confused with anything else. Get rid of all of that. Wipe it off, wipe off the old knife, and then, just because I'm a clean freak, we're going to clean up the whole little section for you down here. So, you guys can tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich while we get ready?
to chuck this rock in. I want to see where you guys are watching from. Let's see. Let's give some shout outs here, people. Let's give some shout outs. Ooh, look at that mountain just coming to life, you guys. Just coming to life. Watching from Utah. So this painting is $242 if it's still available in the store. Whenever I stream on all three of my devices, I don't know if it's sold already. Sometimes by this point, it has already sold. Sometimes not. I never know, especially on a Friday night freestyle show, where uh, whether or not it's sold. So I'll have to wait until the stream is over. But if you guys want to check for me, right, you can go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Right, I sell through the, the Etsy platform. So paintwithjosh.etsy.com and then... Uh, once you're over there, put our little stalactite down, you're going to search for number 896, and that will be this painting right here. So 896 is the one that you want. And our little rock up there. Oh, yeah. Make it nice and dark. And that's this painting. So I think it's 242 with uh, uh, free shipping around the world. All right, finish our edges just like that. Now we're going to come bring it out. However we want to do it. Maybe there's a little streak, right? Pop out there, a little sharp bit. And it comes down, maybe it starts to fall down in here. And these little things as we come out into the mist and little bits of darkness and here and there. And all of a sudden, this whole rock, just with these little pieces, right? Have separated. And it's right up here into the front now with us. Very cool. Might do a little, like a little eagle's nest up here or something. That'd be kind of neat, right? Oh, yeah, guys. Right there. And then we'll separate it from the... The color of the uh, the rocks, obviously, but just with a little bit, maybe we'll make a little little eagle's nest right at the top of there, and you guys can incorporate that into the name. Oh, by the way, you guys get to name this painting. So if you start coming up with a name for it, eventually, oh, what if we just fell off the edge right there? Oh, just down into this deep pool. Water comes, it falls down there. We got this pool of water. Maybe it, there's another river this way or a waterfall that way. Oh my God, we can do whatever we want to do. It's going to be fantastic. Now, with the same dark color on our brush, we're going to come back in here. Because with paint with Josh, I'm very lazy. I like to use the same colors for a lot of stuff. Now, maybe we'll move our waterfall over a bit because there's a little tree. You know what? There's a little tree that's just living right in here. Boop, right on the edge of that little cliff. It's just hanging. Hanging on for dear life. And we can do whatever we want with the cliff. Right? Drop off like that. Very cool. Very cool little thing. Now, that guy's just going to be a little broken, sticky tree. What I want is, maybe our water's going to come. Yeah. No, you know what? It might be like a little pathway. We could do a river. We could do whatever we want. Dude, we could do whatever we want. All right, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Why don't we come up here? We're going to pop in a little old evergreen way up here. We're going to start tapping. I know my hand gets in the way when we do these little trees way at the top. And the YouTube audience gets mad because they can't see it. I know. I feel you. I feel you. All right? Now, what if we do one? We'll do like a little bush next to them. All you need to do is put like a little bit of craziness, right? A little weird thing. That's all that bushes are. A little bit of weirdness. This guy, maybe watch. He's got a couple little, little danglies that are like hanging over the edge. You never know. You never know until you do it. So, do it. Do it, man. Do it. I love our little stalactite guy hanging down. It's very cool. Very cool. Almost looks like a mother bird feeding the baby birds, but yeah, it's going to be neat. In any case, it's going to be very neat. Now, why don't we... We don't even need the trees right here, really. Let's put them off to the other side. So, let's come on to this side, adding a little bit. We're going to go a little higher than our forest in the back. I'm going to put down a straight little line back there. All right, and off this guy, maybe he's an old, saggy old tree like Bob used to paint, where you just have the corner of the brush you start coming out in these little Z patterns, and then you go back and you fill it in. All right? Bang. Oh, little saggy old tree out there like Bob used to paint. Bingo, bango. Just like that old guy. Old, saggy old tree. And we can go, boom, make a little top to him. Perfect, right? That's very cool. I like that, you guys. I like that. Maybe next to him and not all the way so far over that their branches reach out and touch like this, right? You don't want that. You want them in close enough to where, maybe this guy's a little upward facer, so he's got all of his little branches, and they start lifting up, popping up, just like we did this guy up here. Same little, same sort of shape, right? And they lift upwards. They look more alive. Like they're just glad to be alive in this morning, this sunrise of a day, and they're just happy to be alive, these little trees. 
Just fantastic. Why don't we put another guy away? No, you know what? Because we could save some room for a big old foreground tree. And oh, let's just put another guy right here. Why not? He needs a friend. Maybe make him a little downward sagging guy too. Just with the corner of the brush at first. And then by the time you get down to the bottom, you're starting to drop off more little downward saggy bits because we're pushing on it harder and touching more of the brush to the actual canvas, right? Dropping off our little saggy downward facing arms. Very cool. Now, we could literally have water fall out. Oh, and then we could put like a pathway, guys. We could do like a path. We could do some stairs. We could do lots of stuff over here. I love the way this rock is already shaping up, though. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be really cool as it comes down and falls off the edge over here. And you get this really deep little canyon action with the waterfall in the back, guys. Oh, does anybody know if this is sold? Is, is my girls, my, my mods here, can you, can you guys tell me? Has this one sold or not? I, 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 I have no way of checking. It looks really good over there on YouTube, though, I must say. And over here on TikTok and on Facebook. Man, who's the guy that paints? Who's this painter that paints these paintings? He's amazing. <laughs> who's this crazy guy? All right, let's come over here. And we're going to get a little of our odorless mineral spirits onto the brush. And then right into that little dark pile right there. And we're going to mix it up right onto our brush, spinning the brush over and over again, kind of rotating it over and over again, back and forth until it's nice and filled and wet and sloppy. And then we're going to come up maybe out here. This guy's got a little old, a couple old branches off his little tree, little trunk, right? Reaching out these little old things. And you got to have enough of our odorless mineral spirits on the brush in order for our branches to come off the tree uh, come off the brush and stand out, right? Little bits, and we got a little guy over there. A couple little things. Don't have to go all the way to the top. Don't have to be everywhere. But just a little saggy old guy out there. I like him. Oh, I like him. He's got a little guy off that side, over here. He can be a little longer. Maybe he's got one that shoots down there. You never know. They don't all have to be the same. They don't have to all be going in the same direction. I like the guys that come down like that. Almost like they're coming out at us. Very cool. But you don't have to make it too nuts. Don't make it too crazy, Josh. Too many details, and then people start going, uh, it should be like that over here, and shouldn't it look like that on this side? There's too much light, and this, that, and the other. It's not highlighted correctly. So don't put too much detail on it. Otherwise, the, the buttholes come out, and they try to start judging you, right? Now, let's come in with our Bob Ross uh, Dark Sienna Brown, which is the lighter color brown, a little bit of our Cad Yellow. Uh, yeah, no, Yellow Ochre, excuse me. A little of our Yellow Ochre. A little bit more of that yellow ochre, actually. Yeah, and a little bit more of that yellow ochre. There we go. Get too much brown, right? Now, it's got all kind of marbly colored. We're going to scrape up a little line of it. And then on the side where our little sun would be, why don't we take a little bit and just tap it to our tree. Just like that. Now, I don't know what it looks like on the, on the camera to you guys, whether or not you can see, right? It doesn't show much color straight on. But when you're looking at this thing, it's literally sticking out. Like if you were to take your, your brush or your knife and touch your hand and then pull away and you get all those little things because the paint tries to hold on to itself. Oh, it's so cool. It's got so much texture just on that trunk. Just on it. So I can see yellow and brown from this side and I can see yellow and brown from this side. That's wicked. That is just wickedly fantastic. Super, super textured tree. Okay. And it doesn't all have to be the same amount of brightness, right? It really doesn't. Never in our life does it have to all be the same. You never have to show everything exactly the same. We take a little brown and put it on our tree trunks out there. You don't have to cover everything. You don't want to show your whole trunk. All right, maybe this guy's up here a little bit. Come down. This guy's over there, over there. It doesn't all have to be the same. Because right? we're going to cover over the majority of those bits of brown tree trunk anyway. We're going to cover right over them with our highlights and shadows and all that stuff. So don't have to do the whole trunk. You're not ever going to see the whole thing anyway. Now, what if we came out with our little waterfall and it just came screaming out right there, just like it was running from far away and we just shoo, fell down into a pool, right? Then we could have another bit of rock almost come out this way like there was a path that we could walk on around the edge. How do you make it bigger though? You'd have to like, you'd either have to take it around the side and then come up this way. We could do, dude. All right, I got it, 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 I got it. <laughs> I got it. All right, first we're going to go, we're going to get some of our blue paint, some of our 
phthalo blue, right? The bright blue paint. We'll get it on both sides of our brush and wherever we want our waterfall, vertically with the brush and everything, drop it down, right? Just have that dark blue color out there, just about as much as your one inch brush will cover it. And then maybe down around the bottom, we got a little bit of pool starting to form at the base of the thing. And then all of a sudden, boom, now we've got a, a sort of a, an idea on where we want to go, what we want it to look like, what we want to do, just from kind of taking a step back and looking at it, right? There is no plan. Like I've painted this painting 10 times, 20 times, right? Every single one of them is different because there are so many different things you can do. You can have a pathway, you can have grass, you can have a waterfall, you can have a pool, you can have a giant rock coming down. You can have all this thing, right? The giant rock is, is the same in every one. You can add the mountain in ones. You don't have to have the mountain. You can do more sky, you can do this, you can do that. All sorts of stuff, guys. Never has to look exactly like mine looks right now. It doesn't even have to be the same color or the same size. You could do it sideways if you want to. You do whatever you want. It's all up to you. Okay, now I'm gonna come in here and whatever you do is gonna be just as pretty, just as pretty as what I do. As long as you follow the rules of paint with Josh, right? Follow the rules. Now, we're gonna come back with the white on the brush. We're gonna go over to the side just a touch because you have to show, you can't just show it dropping straight down. That looks kind of funky. So out here, we're gonna go over, down. Oh, oh my heart. Oh, that's so gorgeous. I swear to God, if I get paint on this brand new shirt, I'm gonna be so mad. Guys, by the way, Brand new shirts available in the shop, like a little reflection. There's the UFO right there. Little reflection of a UFO mountain scene. If you guys want to get your shirts, uh, I'm going to make them available in the store. I should have done it beforehand, but you know me. I don't ever do anything on time or anything gorgeous. All right, look at how it changes the color of that brush. Just instantly turns both sides blue. Just like that. Actually, we don't even need to go. We're just from right here. Why don't we come up into our spray? saving about a quarter inch to a half inch underneath whatever bit of color you have down there, right? So we haven't come down. Our water is actually right down there, right? But we don't want to come down all the way. Otherwise, you're going to lose your dark, your dark waterator. Does anybody know that, that term that Josh always uses? What's that term that Josh always uses when he's painting a seascape, especially about the dark? You guys tell me. It's three syllables. Dark separator says Amber. Let's pin Amber's comment. You guys are fantastic. Hey, Bailey. Bailey, can you go let the dogs back inside, please? Thank you, hon. You guys are fantastic. Go follow Amber because she knows the dark separator, which basically means we need to keep a little bit of darkness in between those colors. Now, we talk about the three Ps. We talked about them before. We talked about them in the middle, and we're going to talk about them now in the second act or the third act. Or how many? Do I have paint on my face? Guys, you guys got to tell me when I get paint on the side of my face. I think it's gone. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. So, uh, yeah, dark separator. What the hell was I talking about? We're going to come in here. Oh, the three Ps. Okay, so we've got the paint on the brush on the, uh, sorry, paint on the canvas. Now, that's our P1 with P2 is the pressure. Now, watch how far you can get this color to grow. Look at that. Look at how far you can get all that bit of mist to start all based on our pressure. How hard are you pulling on it? How hard are you pushing? How hard are your circles? How big are your circles, right? How far is it mixing outward to get this very soft, very neat little thing that's happening back there? And if we were to take our bit of water exactly where I said we were going to put it, put it right back here. What have we left in between those bit of brightness, right? That little dark separator. It's exactly what we left. All right, take a bit of, of light. Maybe just put it out on that side. Ooh, ooh, just one side it, right? Come in here like this. Try to make our swipes horizontal. There we go. Look at that, guys, already. Got a really, really, really cool little painting just in a few little seconds. Now, we're gonna come back with one more little touch of our Titanium white, we're gonna go back over this front section again, right? Because we want a little bit more texture. Now, here comes the question. Do we go with less pressure on when we're doing our mixies? Or do we go with more pressure when we do our mixies right here, right? You guys tell me, tell me in the comments, less pressure, more pressure. Less pressure, more pressure, you gotta let me know. You gotta let me know. Remember, if you wanna go buy this painting, it's available for sale, paintwithjosh.etsy.com number 896. So if you go into the store and you search in my search bar, number 896 will grab you this painting. 
Let's see. Less, less, less says Jacob. More says Anastasia. More says Micah. Carrie Neal says less. Let's see. Uh, Nala says less. Chris says good job. Appreciate it. Are you using oil paint? Yes, Haley, we are. We're using Bob Ross oil paints and the Meaden oil paint deluxe set. Uh, well, at least the colors from it. The whole set is like an easel and everything. This is the Meaden easel uh, that we're going to be using. I got a brand new easel from Meaden, guys, and we're going to... Same, same exact one as this one. And I'm going to take it down and use it on my first class tomorrow. It's going to be historic. So I'm going to tell you guys right now, since everybody was saying a couple people said more, a couple people said less pressure, right? I'm going to tell you, we're going to use less pressure because we want it to be brighter, right? We want it to be different. We want it to... I want there to be a difference between this brightness and the brightness right behind it. See what I mean? So it gives it that roundish feel. You got a little bit of light mist in the back, a little bit more heavy mist in the front. And again, keeping that dark separator. So you have that small bit of shadow right down underneath our paints. And then you got to make it a little bit brighter. Pop in a couple little things, but we're just using them on the... Uh, right underneath that little separator. Couple little things, right? Little bits. We're not gonna go over it with as much pressure because we don't want it to go as dark as the other bit of blue, right? So very light pressure on those guys. Get those little ripples, very cool. I mean, we're not even down to the water yet, but we can still do it. Come in with our knife like that, add little bits over, over those bright areas, little things with our knife, and then we just pull on them. Right? Pulling side to side, couple little things, back and forth, get those little ripply actions. Ooh! Wicked cool. Wicked cool, guys. So, remember, I think this painting is $242. Something like that. Two four, I think it's something, it's something like that. It's under $250. $242. Remember, it's a 20-inch by 24-inch. So, it's actually bigger than our 18 by 24s. And it's on sale. It's 40% off. It's already reduced price, which brings it down to $242. So, if you want to get a very cool painting uh, for a really cool price... Head over there and get it now. Now, what we're going to do on the uh, the side, actually, before we get too far away, let's go and highlight this, this big old giant rock up here, right? And then we can decide what our whole thing is going to look like. Now, remember, we are away from the sun. We are on the shadowy side. So we're not going to see everything so brightly. Right? Maybe we take a bit of our brown and we start to throw it down like this. And it's going to mix in with our darker colors that we used, right? So the, the kind of purplish mix that we had put pulled away from the edge. We didn't pull it everywhere, right? You see that line? This is unpainted black canvas back here. That's what you want to keep. You don't want to lose all of our shadows. Very lightly, and we come in, we change direction, we start pulling down this way, right? Towards the little eagle's nest down there. And then we're going to change direction again, come down that way. You don't have to make them touch, right? They don't need to touch together. You don't have to be all the same color. They're all so bright. We're on the shadowy side of the mountain back here. Now, let's come back. Maybe we come off to that unpainted section, and then we start coming down. Look at that, right? Leaving that unpainted. It's original black color that we didn't even put any canvas. Didn't we put, any, didn't put nothing on it? There's nothing there. It's nothing. I swear, officer, we didn't put anything on there. I've got video proof. We didn't touch it. We left it. Different directions, right? We're not pulling the same way every which way. Look at that really bright little spot right in there. Come back and rub him in with a little bit of darkness. A little darkness. Now, let's come back. Who knows, maybe this guy got all crazy. Why don't we try getting some paint on the knife, Josh? Get some paint on the knife. Ah, there we go. All right, let me just get down over there, over here. Pulling it down very lightly. All depends on what you want to do with your little bit of mountain. Not mine. Doesn't matter what mine looks like. Just matters what yours looks like. Make it messy, though. You don't have to have a perfectly straight edge. If it's too bright and you can't get anything to scrape off, go back with some of your dark color. Put it right over that sucker, right? Now it looks even cooler because you went and changed it a bit. All right, we're running out of our brown down here. Maybe we get this little guy. Pull him straight down, right? Those little bits. You got to make up some more. So a little bit of our brown, a little bit of our uh, yellow ochre. Mix them up. It's the same, just about the same mix, one for one, right? Just like that. Now we're going to come back, right? Depend on the amount of paint. You don't want to have too much, so pull it in different directions. Pull it off in different directions, down in different directions, over in different directions. Maybe this guy is starting to get real flat over here, right? And you're just starting to pull him in a different way, and you're starting to change what the rock looks like, right? What if it was literally flat like that? 
right? You're like, ooh, what is that? What's going on, Josh? So we'll take a bit of our darkness, put our dark paint underneath so it's got something to grip onto, something to blend with, right? Come back with our little guy. There's a little ledge out there, and then off the back of the ledge it goes down. Maybe it switches and turns down this way. Who knows? Up to us, right? Literally up to us. Whatever we want it to look like, up to us. Here we came in front of the mist. Helps add a little bit of depth, a little distance. Change of the color. Very cool little thing, guys. Very neat. Maybe out here, a little bit brighter so we know it's a bit of rock out there. There we go, you guys. That's a cool little thing. Oh, I like it, right? And again, if you ever want it to be shadowier, come in with our dark colors and just throw some of that deep darkness right over the top. Any little area that you want to change and add a bit more deepness to, right? Coming in, we're scraping up that original color and we're just pulling it down in different areas at different ways, just until we like it, till we want it to, however we want it to look, right? And that's what you get. It's very cool, guys. Very cool. Man, I like this one so much. All right, now let's come over here. We're gonna take that dark color again, right? And if you don't have enough, just mix it up onto your brush. Doesn't matter, blue, crimson, black, it'll all mix to that very deep, dark, purpley color. And we're gonna come over like this, and now we're gonna have to be quick. So we're gonna come out, say there was a little flat area right there, right? We got our little bit, and you can walk around the edge, which means we're gonna have a bit of rock falling down this way. All right, so just straight down with the knife, just, uh, the brush, filling it in little bits just so we cover, drop down and get those little like stalactites underneath that little thing. I wonder what's going on back there. What is happening back there, right? Very cool. Now, we'll have a little walkway as it comes around. Maybe our bit of darkness will come down here into the rock or into the water. Bit like that. Very cool. Pull it off to the side. Then we can go highlight those guys, highlight the trees, and then we'll be all done. Ooh, we'll get a big section of rock up in here. Now remember, even though it's got the black gesso paint on it, you still want to put some of our thick dark paint on there in order for our highlights to grab. All right? If there's nothing for it to grab onto, then it's going to be too bright. Right? So let's say this little guy, we're just going to start pulling him side to side. Our whole little pathway, just right there. Don't even need nothing else. Pull it down the smallest little bit, just to drag any little teensiest, tinesiest little bit of color down there. And we turn our knife on the side, just dropping little things, highlighting little bits. Got to leave those dark areas, though. Don't have to highlight everything, that's for sure. The sun's never going to reach down and hit all those guys the same. A right, little bit of dark underneath. Pull it down, all up to you. Now we can change direction, start sliding down this way. All right, same color, same everything. All depends on how much paint we're putting on there, where you're leaving those dark areas, right? Where you're leaving the little bits. Got our whole little action right there. That's freaking cool. That is freaking cool. Get a change of direction. Maybe we start pulling more sideways onto this side, right? It just changes it up. That's all you got to do. One little bit back in there. That guy go down there. And then, yeah, we got a pretty wicked looking little, uh, little pathway that comes off the edge. Now, in order to make it look like that, we're going to have to make a little bit more color up and then get it up into our rocky area up top. So, ooh, yeah, that'd be cool if we put some grass in there, too. Put some grass in there, bro. Okay, up here, what if we just cover in the smallest little bits, not trying to get every piece, all right? Just little things, not trying to get all the way back to the edge. We are in, actually, this guy's going to be in the sun, so you can use more paint make it brighter if you want but remember to leave those deep dark areas back inside and down underneath here you don't have to have the things touch you got to have a dark separator back in here to separate our rocks from our little pathway right a little pathway I wonder if we can make a bit of white oh yeah there we go let's take a bit of white with a bit of that brown just so it's a different color right much brighter kind of tan color like that just so we can get it to stand out a bit away from all the other rocks, right? Very flat, not even keeping them connected, right? They're not even connected, literally. You don't have to make everything the same color. The more you mix it, the more it's going to kind of uh, dull itself down into the other things and just like that, get a little walkway up to the edge, up to the edge. We can even put a little fence post up on the edge right here. 
Like you can get to the edge, but be careful. <laughs> Don't fall over. Don't fall over the edge. There we go. A couple little bits of deep darkness down underneath. Let it mix in with that light color brown. Very cool, guys. Very cool. All you really need, right? All you need. Now, let's put one big old just ginormous tree right through the top up here. So we're coming in like this, getting all of our dark colors, our black, our crimson, our blue. And we're gonna come down straight through the whole smash, very thin up top. And then as we get down thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker, more pressure, boom, all the way down here off the whole thing. And you're like, oh my goodness, he just ruined it. What happened? It was looking so pretty. And now he's got this ginormous tree right through the center of the whole thing. What was he thinking? Trust me, it leaves a lot of, uh, gives us a lot of depth when you do that. Very lightly, and then you start getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Boom, that's cool. I like that. You guys know what too? Dude, what if he had a friend? What if he had a friend that fell down and it was like, maybe it landed right over there. Oh guys, oh you guys. What if he had a little friendly little tree and it was, his buddy got too dry and just fell down. So maybe it's very light up here and then we get darker and darker and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier as it goes like that. See that? Come and fall down right through. Get very thick down here at the bottom, right? That shows that it's going out away from us. It's all about the, the gradient of how thin it is to how thick it is way the heck out here. Way the heck out here. Boom. Very cool. Just like this. Now we can have a lot of branches come off of this guy, right? It's almost like he's out there just holding himself up. A lot of branches, but now it looks like he's thunk, landed way the heck out there. Very neat. Now we can even make his whole trunk way up here. It all depends on where you highlight it, right? All depends on where you're highlighting it, how far you're pulling on it. It could have come down and smacked right across the edge over there. Very cool. Dude, we could do another one off this side too. Guys, it'd be like X marks the spot. But then we'd have way too many branches. I know if London was here, she'd be like, oh my God, stop. No more big trees. Jesus, just quit. What are you doing? Uh, she never liked the big trees. Never liked the big old trees. There we go. Now, maybe down here, We've got a few little bits of like, just sort of these little rocky, crazy little things that are happening down in here, right? So just a couple little streaks out, and then we're gonna fill it up. And all you want are those little sharp edges out there. It's like a little stony little bit of rock, almost like kryptonite kind of rock. There we go, very cool. Just a little bit of mess down at the bottom. Very neat. Oh, I like it. Now let's wash off that fan brush. If I keep it in my hand, I'm gonna keep wanting to add more big old branches and big old trees and big old everything. And we got two minutes, two minutes, two minutes to finish the show. Okay, let's get a bunch of thinner onto our palette right here. All right, all we're doing, going into our odorless mineral spirits, dipping our brush in, then dipping it on the palette, and dipping the brush in, and then dipping it on the palette. And all we're doing is getting it in there so we can mix it up and the paint will be nice and wet. Just all wet and crazy, right? And then we can come off with our crazy branches through all this mist and a bit of action, right? And they're gonna stand out if they're nice and dark. Straight through there. Really cool, this whole, this poor little tree done fell off and just, he's just mad. He's just mad, I don't know why. He's got that branch maybe come up right through the waterfall like that, guys. Remember, they're on their side, so it's not a tree branch like you would normally paint a tree branch. You can do it all sorts of crazy angles because the tree's actually fallen over. It's not a, it's not straight up and down. That's for sure. A couple little bits. Where do you think they'd come off? Totally up to you. All right, much thicker down here at the bottom. Much thicker. Sometimes you gotta go over it twice just to have the thickness right like that, a couple little bits, a little streak over here. Man, he's a spiky little guy, this guy. 
He's a spiky, angry old tree. There we go. All depends, guys. Up to you. What you want to do. How many little bits you want to give him. How far it grows, right? How many little branches he's got. All up to you guys. If we came down this way. Little guy popping out the side. Very neat. Very neat. One out here. Boop. Coming up through the rocks. Very cool. Now let's go get this guy. Maybe we pop out up here. He's got a little branch. And who knows? Little guy off the top. And when you start running out of thinner, like I am right now, right, it becomes harder and harder to do. So go back to your thinner. Add more, a couple more little dabs, right? So it's much more liquidy and wet. And then it'll come off our brush much easier. Much easier like that. So, bang. A couple little bits here and there. And then we get to call her nice and done. So come up with a name for this painting, guys. And we're going to have to name it and then run out the door to go pick up London from the airport. So if you have purchased this painting and I just haven't seen it yet, I very much appreciate your purchase. Um, I will get to uh, the name for whoever buys it. Or if we don't have a buyer, then maybe we'll just choose a name and uh, go for it right off the bat. So... Right out there. Remember, this whole side's very thick, so you got to pick and choose your thin areas where you want to put your branches from our bigger tree. Don't have to have many, but you got to have a couple back in there. Kind of cutting across all that, that light color. Very cool. So, come up with a name for this painting. What would you want to call it if you had just painted it? If it was your painting or if you were going to buy it, what would you want to name this sucker? And just quickly, I'm going to go back and highlight those little trees way back there with some sap green and some liquid white. The liquid white is there just to help the green come off of the brush and stick on to our little tree back there. Right, little bits. Doesn't have to be so super bright all the time. Little things covering over here, there, and everywhere. Right? Our little bits. Then we can blend them down, tap them in. Get these far away little trees. That's all it really is. It's just a bit of far away um, detail. That's really it. Bit of far away little detail. Just like that. Right? And then we decide what they look like. That's really much, pretty much it. Now, come back, a little bit more of our green, a little bit more of our liquid white, just so it comes off the brush. Come tap up onto this guy, because he's got the, he's the old upward facer. All right, we can tap in there. Again, we're not trying to cover everything. We're not trying to make all the colors touch. We're not trying to do too much of anything like that. All right, a little bit of green back in there. Again, doesn't all have to be the same. Very cool. Very, very neat. Very cool, guys. So, start coming up with a name for this painting. What would you want to call it if it was yours? If you had painted it, what are you going to name it? As I mix up the last little bit of our, crim or our yellow ochre and our uh, dark sienna brown, come over here. I'm going to start to just pull it very lightly to the side of our little tree right here. Very cool. Very lightly. you got to leave a dark side to it. And if it gets too bright, you can always go back and work it again in with all that darkness. Very cool. Don't even have to go all the way to the top. Now, here, we're going to go back and we're going to work it very lightly until we decide, okay, that looks like tree bark, or no, that doesn't look like tree bark. Like we get to decide what it looks like. And again, it doesn't have to be the same all the way to the top. Really don't want it to be. I don't want it to be. Never want it to be all the same. All right, got to leave that darkness. Leave our little dark areas back there. Come over here. Maybe we add a little touch just to the bit of our tree branches. Just a little bit in certain places where it'll stick. Very cool. Now we'll come along the back side, right, and go the opposite direction, pulling that darkness back over the color until you have it about half and half skis. And, of course, you don't want it to be the perfect, most gorgeous, perfect thing. So make it a weird half and half. That's what I always say. Now back on this guy, maybe we got, maybe if we do him like this, maybe if we streak him down just on the top, though, and we'll touch, 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 touch. All the way up there is where his little trunk ended up. Very cool. Right, where you, whenever you can't slide or drag, just touch. 
touch and pull away, right? The more you touch and pull away, the cooler little things you'll get to stick on there. Just like that. And it'll be like a crazy little bark for our tree. Very cool. Look at that, you guys. Look at this sucker. Look at him. Very neat. And remember, the more times you go over it, the more times it's going to darken down. So, oh, I like that. That's very cool. But you got to have a dark side as well. Don't go crazy with all your brightness. You have to have some dark on your stuff. And it can't all be the same amount of brightness. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, you guys. Oh, I love this one. Love it so much, I'm even talking softer. Boom. That's a cool looking thing. That is a neat, neat, neat looking thing. Now this guy back here, we're gonna add just a couple little bits of difference in color. Little things make it a little darker as it gets down to the bottom. Just like that. Maybe streak that guy off that way too. Very cool. Very cool guys. So come up with a name for this painting. What would you want to call it? If it was your painting, I'm gonna go add the old family of birds and then we're gonna go pick up London out of the airport. This, we're going to highlight that up there too. Don't worry about that. Let's go throw these guys in. And remember, this painting is available for sale. If it hasn't sold already, I don't know because I'm streaming to all three platforms and I don't know, I don't have any extra devices to tell me that uh, if it's sold or not. So if it hasn't sold, go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com or you just go to paintwithjosh.com and it's the very first link that you come to on paintwithjosh.com and that'll take you to the Etsy store and then once you're inside the Etsy store there's a little search bar and you take the search bar and you type in number 896 and 896 is this painting right here and it's available for you to hang on your wall it's gonna be fantastic so what do we come up with a name for for this one guys has anybody got a really good name for it just a really good one as I clean up the rest of these brushes real quickly. And then we need to swap our thinner cup because it's getting gross. It's getting gross. So who's got a good name for this painting? Let me know in the comments. And who knows, I might just pick your name and uh, give you a shout out. You never know. Never know. Hey, Bailey. Bailey. Where's this kid? <laughs> what is she doing? I hope you have shoes on and you're ready to go. That's all I gotta say. Mom's probably watching, so she knows I'll be running late, so it's fine. <clears throat> there we go. All right, guys, hit me with the names. What do we got for names for this painting right here? And then we'll see if it's sold and everything else. There we go, okay. That over there, that over there. That's a whole nother mess I gotta deal with later. So let's see what we got for names. Let's see, let's see. Yeah. Yes, love. Get your shoes on. We gotta get ready to go get uh, go mom get mom. Said, mom said that she's mom said that you should keep painting because she's almost at back school, so she'll just gonna give her No! Home. We're gonna come pick her up. We're coming to pick her up. Call her back and text her. Okay. It's sold and no, London, don't Uber. That's silly. I, we'll come get you. You said 9.30, it's not even nine. How could you land at nine? You said 9.30. <laughs> if you Uber, at least come over here and, and you know see this awesome painting. Let's see, it did sell or it didn't sell, Airy Fairy Fay. I missed that comment. It did, uh, did it not? Not so hollow heart, I like that title. Anybody? Anybody guys? It did sell, okay. Uh, Etsy shows it sold. All right. In any case, I'll message the buyer and uh, we got to get out of here and say goodbye to everybody. So Bailey, can you hit all the buttons? I love you guys. Start over on, uh, on YouTube. Bye guys. We'll see you later.